everyone, it's me, and today let's watch Peter Pan Theory together. Let's go. I don't wanna grow up, find a toy to wreck it. They got a million toys and toys to wreck that I can play with. I don't wanna grow up, I'm a toy to wreck it. After 70 years in business, Toys R Us announced yesterday it's closing its doors in America. Looks like everyone has to grow up sometime, eh, Peter? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory! Hello! Once again, thank you all so much for coming over to watching this video. This video came out in year 2018, so yeah, let's continue watching. One more thing, I noticed that uh, the words grow up, be mature, these kind of things can be insult. But, please remember, please be respectful and welcome to other, other people. Be polite. Alright, thank you. The Never Never Land of the Internet. Uh, never, that's never Peter land. Pan's Never Never Land, not the creepy Michael Jackson Never Land. If you haven't guessed it yet, today we're exploring the world of Disney's favorite narcissistic tween heartthrob, Peter Pan. As you're probably aware, because I say this literally every Disney episode, growing up, I loved all the Disney movies, except for Pinocchio. But who didn't want to be Peter Pan? He had the ladies fighting over him constantly, which is kind of inexplicable when you think about what a creeper he actually is in his own movie. Ooh, here's a mystery boy who sneaks into my bedroom at night and talks only about himself. Give me a piece of that. Yes. The real Whoa. big draw here is obvious. Everyone wants to be able to stay a kid forever and play video games and avoid the IRS because taxes suck. But you can't be Peter Pan and stay young forever unless you figure out where Neverland is and also grab some fairy dust and fly there and defeat some pirates. But one thing at a time, people, the geography is clearly the hardest part uh -huh. until today. That's until right. Today. The mission for today is to find the geographic location of Neverland. Sounds absurd, right? But we're actually given plenty of hints throughout the movie and books. Second huh? star to the right and straight on till morning and all that jazz. Even J.M. Barry's original book describes Peter and the Darling children flying over the ocean to get to Neverland, but he just never specifically says where they choose to land. In the original versions, there's no mention of a star at all. He just says second to the right and then straight on till morning. But I'm not talking hints. I am telling you today that I have definitively located Neverland to the point that you can actually book your next vacation there and partake in all the swashbuckling and Native American themed racism you want. So no. sprinkle yourselves with theory dust and think happy thoughts. Next stop is Neverland. With Deadpool. To start, we need to remember that Wendy, John, and Michael Darling live in London. When Peter tells them that Neverland is the second star to the right and straight on till morning, it seems really vague, but actually the scene gives us plenty of clues to determine which direction they're headed. First, I compared this frame of the movie to constellations that could reasonably appear in the London night sky. While we don't get anything too conclusive, we can actually speculate that these stars here might be Mizar and Elcor. Which well, when in doubt, you can always consult with an uh, astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. yeah which are in similar positions to what we see in the movie, though in real life they should appear to be part of the Big Dipper constellation. Anyway, there's no need to get out your astrolabes just yet. <laughs> the good news is we actually don't need the exact stars that they're looking at. We can tell which direction the kids are facing just from the landmarks around them. After flying out of the nursery, the kids and Peter land on one of the sides of the Elizabeth Tower clock. The east side, to be specific. Now, I already hear you, but actually, people cracking your knuckles preparing for a wave of comments saying, But actually, that's not Elizabeth Tower, that's Big Ben. But Ben. But a uh, fun fact, Big Ben is the nickname of the bell inside of the Elizabeth Tower. So feel free to annoy all your friends with your pedantic knowledge of London landmarks. Anyway, how can we tell that they're facing east? Well, look at the shot of Peter and the Darlings flying up to the clock. In the bottom right, we can see a statue of a horse rearing up. And that is, in fact, the statue known as the Boudican Rebellion statue, which commemorates an ancient Celtic queen who drove the Romans out of London. Yes, queen! That statue is located to the northeast of the tower. So they're landing on the east side. Going to the right would be them flying south, but we get an even more specific idea of the direction by tracking their flight. They fly over Westminster Bridge facing east, then they make a sharp turn over the bridge, so sharp that the camera has to rotate to follow Peter to head southwest. And that's the direction the camera follows them until they get to Neverland. TLDR, they're going south and west of London, which indicates that they're making a transatlantic flight towards the Americas. So now that wow. we know they're headed to North or South America, we can look at a few other factors to help us narrow down the search for Neverland. 
So you must remember, it's not the country America, United States of America, it's the America continent. Can be south, can be north, can be central. And judging by the map that we see of Neverland, we're looking at an island that's fairly small and features a number of inlets and lagoons. Typically, there are two types of lagoons in the Americas. Coastal lagoons, which are connected to the coastline of a much larger landmass, and atoll lagoons, which are more isolated and formed by coral reefs. By the oh. looks of it, there are no major landmasses in the waters around Neverland, so we can conclude that Neverland is an atoll. Now, atolls atoll. require coral reefs and tropical waters, so that narrows our search a lot. From the southern tip of Florida, throughout the Caribbean, and down through the coast of Brazil. But geography is just the beginning. We also know a lot about what's on that island, notably crocodiles. Assuming this crocodile didn't escape from the zoo or from Suicide Squad, though who can blame him for wanting to escape that movie, we can hit oh! Neverland's location if we know the species of crocodile. There are only two species of crocodile indigenous to the waters around Latin America, Morlet's crocodile and the American crocodile. While both can take your hand off pretty darn well, Morlet's crocodile is a lot smaller than the American crocodile, at about 10 feet to 16 feet. Considering the fact that Captain Hook fit entirely inside this crocodile's mouth, we're much more likely to be looking at the American crocodile. Additionally, Morlet's crocodile is only found in freshwater environments, while the American crocodile is most often found in salt water, like you'd find off the coast of an atoll. The only downside here is that the American crocodile is pretty widespread as far as man-eating reptiles go, so we're looking at pretty much the entire Caribbean in our hunt for Neverland. There are also a few other animals that I thought might narrow things down a bit more. Jam Barry says that there are sea turtles and flamingos in Neverland, Land, but those are also found all around the Caribbean. The seagull that we see Smee shave doesn't narrow it down. The mermaids, for these I even looked at the habitats of manatees, which believe it or not are historically the animal most commonly associated with mermaid sightings, and that's... So yeah, mermaids are sort of, um, uh, manatees? Okay, maybe still didn't narrow things down. So at that point, I ran out of animals and wasn't sure if I was looking at a dead end here. But it turns out that the last part of the theory doesn't hinge on the animals in Neverland, it hinges on the people. According to the source material for Peter Pan, Captain Hook was originally a bosun for Blackbeard the Pirate. Now, Blackbeard was very busy pirating all over the east coast of America and the Caribbean from 1716 to 1718, which, when you stop and think about it, for carrying the title of the most famous non-fictional pirate in his history is actually not Captain Jack Sparrow that long of a time spent a pillaging and searching for booty. But what Blackbeard lacked in longevity, he made up for in volume. Blackbeard had a ton of instances over that two-year period stealing wine, burning ships, and blockading ports. So where does Captain Hook fit into all this? Well, in the spring of 1718, Blackbeard captured a few ships in the Gulf of Honduras, right off the Yucatan Peninsula, and added those to his fleet. Specifically, he was off the coast of the Ternef Atoll, just east of Belize, which, wouldn't you know it, just happens to be a little tropical atoll hole with lagoons, crocodiles, flamingos, sea turtles, the whole shebang. As a bosun in Blackbeard's fleet, there's actually historical precedent that Captain Hook would have actually graduated up to the role of captain on one of those commandeered ships in the turn of a toll. In the Peter Pan story, it's specifically the Jolly Roger. And then from there, he drops anchor in Neverland and then gives up his life of pillaging in exchange for sword fighting little boys and then outrunning a single crocodile. Probably would have been better off if he just stayed a bosun. There is though one kind yeah. of glaring hole in this that we can't really ignore. If we're going the history route, wouldn't we also have to ignore the timelines? I mean, Blackbeard died in 1718, but the Darling family is clearly from the early 1900s. And we even see things in the movie like the statue of Boudicca, which wasn't installed until 1902. Well, it turns out we don't have to ignore the timeline. Even that works out under this theory. We know that once you land in Neverland, you never, never grow old, right? That's kind of the whole shtick of this place. Well, it turns out that Neverland, aka the Turn of a toll is the exact historical region believed to contain the Fountain of Youth, the oh! one geographic feature in the entire world that would actually behave and function like a real-life Neverland. Though most of the stories you hear about the Fountain of Youth in history class talk a lot about Ponce de Leon, who mostly looked for it around Florida, the older and much more accurate historical hunt for it was actually performed by Juan de Solis, an earlier Spanish explorer than old Ponce, who spent all of his time looking for the Fountain of Youth in the Gulf of Honduras. Do most Mostly to really bad Spanish historical record keeping, Ponce de Leon was actually a thousand miles off the mark 
track of the area that he was looking for, leaving the Fountain of Youth squarely off the coast of Honduras and in exactly the location we predict for Neverland. So there you have it, everyone. Book your spring break for the Turn of a Toll now because it's the real location for everlasting childhood. Talk about your once-in-a-lifetime vacation. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Wow, that's very interesting. But, well, um, that's around Central America continent, right? I'm not too sure about it, but thank you so much for watching this video together with me. I hope that you find this video very interesting and very unique to watch. Quite special, isn't it? Well, um, there's a bit of entertainment and enjoyable uh, factor into it. And a lot of educated and a lot of educational stuff. If you do like this video, please remember to um brrr, sorry, one time. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share about. Don't forget to follow my channel. I see appreciate all the support and connection for my They are lifting and very motivating for me. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory and cut. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye bye. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.